Hi. Now, in the last part of this question, we're told that Q and the string are now removed. And we've got to determine whether P remains in equilibrium. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video, do come back when ready, and you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Well, first of all, if Q and the string are now removed, we're going to have a situation like this. Our particle P is just going to be on this rough inclined plane. Now, first of all, what I'm going to do is we'll just put in some of the forces then that are acting on P. And we've got the weight clearly acting on P. That's going to be 32 Newtons. Now, there is going to be a normal contact force. It's going to be R, but it's not going to be the same normal contact force as we had in the previous parts, because in the previous parts, we had a tension acting on P. So that would have affected R. There's going to be friction. We don't know what that frictional force is going to be. I'm just going to call it F, and it's going to oppose motion. So I'm just going to put that up in that direction, call it F. And what I'm going to do is work out what F would have to be if it was to keep this in equilibrium. And then I'm going to compare it with what its maximum value would be when it's limiting. That is F equals mu R. So what I'm going to need to do is to work out what R is anyway. So it's going to require resolving forces perpendicular to the plane. So I'll just put a dotted line in here and this angle in here would be 30 degrees. So if I resolve perpendicular to the plane first of all, but go away from the plane as positive, then what I've got is all of R acting in that positive sense. This force of friction, F newtons, that's perpendicular to the direction I'm resolving in, so it has no effect. But the weight is inclined at 30 degrees to the direction I'm resolving in, so I need to split this into the two components. So those two components of weight are going to be into the plane and down the plane. We're not interested in the one down the plane because it's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in. It's only this one into the plane. It contains the angle of 30 degrees, so it's going to be 32 cosine 30 degrees. And so because it acts into the plane, it's going to be minus 32 cosine of 30 degrees. And so I'll just remove those components again. So this is the resultant force now acting on P in the perpendicular direction to the plane. And that is equal to zero because the particle is not moving away from the plane or into the plane. So we can solve this now for R. R equals 32 cosine of 30 degrees. And if you work that out, R turns out to be 27.712 and so on. And that would be measured in Newtons. Now that I've got R, all I need to do next is just work out what the maximum value of friction could be. F equals mu R in other words. So we'll look at that maximum value of friction. Just put maximum value of F. And that's going to be equal then to mu multiplied by r. Taking mu to be 0 0.879, 0 0.879, and if we multiply this now with r, which we just found out as being 27.712 and so on, then what we get is 24.35 and so on. Okay, Newtons. So that's the maximum value that the friction can reach. But what is causing this particle to want to slide down the plane? Well, it's its component of weight. 
And if we put those components back in, it's this one down the plane. Remember, this one now will not have any effect down the plane as it is at right angles to it. So this component down the plane is going to be 32 sine 30 degrees because it doesn't contain this angle here. So if we just write that in here, that the component, okay, put component of weight, we'll say down plane, well that's going to be equal then to 32 times the sine of 30 degrees. And if you work that out, it comes to 16 newtons. So if that is the force that is trying to push the particle P down the plane, then clearly friction, because it hasn't reached its maximum value, it's now just going to be 16 newtons. F is going to equal 16 newtons. It can balance that out. So therefore, what we've got is that P must be in equilibrium. P is in equilibrium. And the reason then is because, or we'll just put since, the force down the plane, that's the 16 newtons, the component of weight, is less than the maximum frictional force mu r. Okay, well I hope you've been able to follow my reasoning there and uh, that brings us now to the end of this particular problem.